Welcome back to another tutorial. This is episode 5 and today we're going to be doing um, what I said we were going to do in the last episode which was um, the geometric art but we're going to add some sort of uh, animatable light streaks around the edges. Um, they're not going to look fantastic but it's just a nice quick and easy tutorial that I can slam out and you can sort of practice with, see what you can do. I'm always interested in what you are able to come up with using my tutorials as a base, so I'd really like um, some comments, and also thank you so much for the likes and views on the last video, it's been fantastic, and subscribers, that's, I know I'm not 100 yet, but that's so big for me, I'm really happy, and yeah, thank you. Anyway, so let's jump into Blender, um, like so. So I've got Blender 3.2 beta, and we are going to start off by deleting the default camera and light. We're going to keep the default cube, we're going to delete its sole, but not the actual cube. Uh, Shift A, camera, Control Alt 0 to bring it to the viewport, and we're going to go for 25 on the X, 0 on the Y, 0 on the Z, because we're not going to move that cube, and just level out the camera, like so. We're going to go to our render engine and select GPU compute, and we're going to do 50 samples on the viewport and 300 on the render. And there you go, thank you for. No. So we're also now going to add uh, a torus. Come down here to your add torus, and we're going to increase the segments to 1, 2, 8. That's a computer number, and then we are going to increase the radius, probably to three, and then the minor radius we can bring down to about there. That's nice. And sh set shade smooth on that. Now let's go to our camera, select the torus, and press R. And R again, we're just going to rotate it so it's somewhere. Oh, this is going to be fun. Like that. That looks good. And then select the cube. And go over to geometry nodes. And as always, until I learn what I can actually do with this, get rid of the spreadsheet. I'm going to go to our camera view. With the cube selected, press new. And you can see we have our input and output. We want to keep the output, but we want to delete the sole of the cube, so delete that input. Now we're going to zoom in and zoom out on here. So let's get started. We're going to add a mesh primitive cube. And we're going to add um, a value instance which is going to power each of these values is a cube so I want to make sure that all these numbers are the same without changing every single one of them every single time so I'm just going to grab oops value into the vertices x vertices y and vertices z and then so we can see what we're doing just plug that mesh into the geometry now we've got nothing now we've got something and then we want to make this as big, so we're going to actually shift D another value that's made it a 3 meter cube, fantastic but let's go for 2.5 that's looking a bit better so this value here we're going to rename as cube size and we're going to rename this to cube sub divisions and what this will do if we add our mesh to curve as we increase this it's increasing our subdivisions and that's looking pretty good but let's go for one less so let's go for four so we've got this nice three by three so a, you know nine vol Right, so that is that set up. We now need to add a curve to mesh, just like the last tutorial. And we need to add a profile curve. So curve, circle. I practiced with using other 
um, curves, but this still gives the best result. That obviously looks a bit ridiculous, so bring that down until you get 0 0.1. That's perfect. You can see these are not capped, but that's not going to matter when we instance on points. And instead of adding like an icosphere or another cube, we're going to use this same cube. So let's just tidy up the layout a little bit by adding a set material. That's going to be it for the whole lot. We want to set shade smooth on just the uh, struts, we'll call them. So I'm going to add it there. Because if we add shade smooth to the instanced cubes, it looks a bit funny. So I tend not to do that. And then we'll add a join geometry between the set shade smooth and the set material. So that's all that pre ready to go. Now, let's scale the original cube. So grab a scale element, plug the mesh of the cube into the geometry there. And then we are going to instance on points. And if you remember from last time, it's the mesh to curve curve output into the instance on points points and the geometry to the instance here. And I'll just can plug that into the join geometry. But now we just have another big cube. But you can see there's some overlay. Uh, when you zoom out, there's those three lines, like so. You can see the three cubes. So we are going to scale it down until we've got something that looks like that and um, maybe go up a bit yes that's better so we are done with the geometry nodes for now we're going to come back to set the material but let's just again reposition a few things and then we'll get on to the light streaks how that works really simple I love it personally you might hate it uh, with the cube selected, I am going to rotate it by 45 on the X and 45 on the Y. So we've got something that looks like that. And then we're going to switch over to our viewport shading. And we're going to select the torus. I'm just going to bring that background down to black. So select that torus. Open a new window or go over to your shading tab. And click new. So I'm going to be looking over at the other screen, as I always do, just so you can see, uh, or so I can see how I did my test uh, project. I'll save as tutorial test thing. Ha, crashes won't get me this time. Oh, right. So with your torus selected, I'm going to turn this off, this off, this off, this off, this off, and we're going to grab a colour ramp. We're going to grab a gradient texture and change from linear to radial, plug the colour into the factor, and then if you have Node Wrangler enabled, which is really easy, just go to Preferences, go to Add-ons, and type in WR. It's there. Just make sure that's enabled. It's pre-built into Blender. They can't enable every default add-on because it will just take too long to load. So anyway, with Gradient Texture uh, selected, press Control and T, and that's going to bring up a mapping node and a texture coordinate. And we're going to use the object coordinate into the vector and you'll see why this mapping node becomes quite fun in a minute. And we're going to plug the color of the color ramp into the emission color. On the color ramp, change it to constant, and we will change the colors to a nice blue, and move this to 0.5, it works kind of weirdly, and we'll change this to a nice purple. That's not purple. Yeah, that'll do. Fantastic. And uh, probably up that a bit more. So you can see now we've got these two colours. Now to animate it, really easy. On the rotation Z, if you press 
I with it selected and then come across in your timeline to let's say 60 and then we can move it 180 degrees press I on there we'll change our uh, sequence to 60 and then we can play that and you can see it repeating but I'm an idiot, <laughs> so let's go to 120. And we're going to change that 60 value to 360. Press R on it again. I'm just going to bring that over to 120. Now, it's going to seamlessly loop. It's great. Okay, so that's that set up. Now we're going to put my lovely ice shader that I always put on everything. So with the cube selected, obviously what we're going to do here isn't going to affect uh, the actual cube until I plug it into the geometry node, which I will do now. And then switch back to shader. I'm just going to call that ice so I know. Brilliant. And then we're going to go fully transmissive with the incidence uh, index of refraction at 1.309. And then we'll add some frost. Like I always do. You're probably getting bored of this uh, shader now, but hey, when you're proud of something, you keep using it. Uh, color ramp. Control shift click on the color ramp so I can see. Uh, control T on the texture, and I'm going to use the object coordinate. No, I'm not. Actually, I'm going to use the camera. So, whatever the camera sees, I'm going to bring this black in. Bring that scale in a bit more. Nice. And then control shift, click the BSDF again, just so it goes back on there. Plug the color of the color ramp into the transmission roughness and the roughness. And the height of the bump node, normal into normal. Yeah, that's looking good. And then I can probably even plug that into there, just to give it a further bit. Or can we add a displacement? Yeah. Fantastic. Cool. So, just so there's a bit more light, I am going to click back on the torus. I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to add inner torus. And for this, I am going to make it green and yellow. I'm just going to select that material one again so it goes back to normal. So, Select the torus, shift D, S to scale, going to bring it inside the cube now. Like so. R twice, and we're just going to add a different rotation. Select that inner torus, and we're going to select inner torus. There we go. So that is all the shaders set up, and it's all looking nice. Now, finally, what we're going to do is add a plane, scale it up. Oh, that looks cool, but that's not what we're doing. <laughs> G, Z, bring it down. And let's go to our camera so we can see where the bounds are. Yeah, so we're going to... Oops, oh dear, oh... Scale up to about there, that's good. Bring it down just a tad more. And then we're going to add our background. So tab into edit mode, select these two back points, E to extrude and Z on the Z axis. And does that look good? Uh, a bit more actually. So E, Z. 
and then we're going to select our baseline control B to bevel just bring that up and then we're going to add more segments yeah brilliant and we're going to add a shader for this so bring out your shader oh dear uh oh saved it bring out a, another window shader editor and we'll click new and we want to make it metallic bring down the roughness just a tad and I think that will be good like that that's looking cool base color keep it a white yeah I'm happy with that personally and then Oh, what I didn't notice is that the keyframes have been copied for the inside, so you can see them actually moving on the inside as well, which is really quite nice. I am going to re-pick that green. I might just go for the hex value, RGB, and yellow, FFFF00. Just make sure the colors match nicely. And bring up the emission strength of the inside one to 75. That should be good. And then we can render that out and we'll have a finished project. So I'm going to render this now and then show you what it looks like. Right, so that's been rendered out. So now it's time for the compositing, which is just going to be simple. I'm not going to do any of the extreme node setup that we did last time. Um, as I found out last time, my camera went a bit jittery, but you don't need to look at my face to see what I'm doing. So come over to the compositing tab and select use nodes. I've rendered the image and as always add a viewer so we can see what we are doing. I'm going to zoom out and shift, right click, drag, make that point so we can see our image. It looks shiny, I like it. But yeah, I'm glad I do. And we're just going to add a glare, I think. Wait for that to composite so we can see. Way too much, way too 80s style. So let's go to Ghosts, see what that looks like. That looks like a quasar. That's cool, but again, that's that's too much. Let's way up the threshold. What does that look like then? Yeah, no. Um, let's go to Fog Glow. We just want a nice sort of fog. So we can see that internal one. We've set the threshold at 30. Now, last time I told you it was a bit arbitrary, didn't really understand it, but what it looks like is we've set the middle emission to be about 75 and the outside emission is about 35. So anything above 30 will glow. So let's go down to 15, see what that looks like. That's more like it. Um, I'll probably drop that down to 12.5. Yeah, that looks cool. And then set that to high. Got a nice high res looking glow. No, or low. Medium's good. It's always worth playing about with these settings and see what works for you, what you like. I'm not telling you what to do. Yeah, that's perfect. And then just go nuts. So maybe add a bokeh blur. No, because we don't have any of those. Um, we'll add... A distortion, because I love the lens distortion. The very simple way I set it up. It's very nice. Minus 0.1. Mm, 
9.1. Yeah, that's good. And then, again, you can render this out um, with your final project, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm now going to just terminate this capture and I'm going to render the looping video so you can see it in all its glory. Um, yeah, so I will be back very shortly. Okay, so what was shortly for you was actually a couple of days for me because I rendered the video wrong. Um, then I had work and stuff like that. I ended up re-rendering it in 30 frames per second, 4K, MP4, uh, with the compositing each frame, and there was 120 frames, each frame took 1 minute and 40, which is 100 seconds, 100 times 120 is 12,000, and that works out as about 3 and a third hours it took to render twice. Um, so I'm now picking up on a completely different day, but um, it looks fantastic. So here it is. I'm really happy with that. You've got the caustics. Well, it looks like caustics at the top, the nice glows, and because it's using light tracing, you've got the shadows in the bottom and their realistic reflections. So that looks, personally, I think that looks fantastic. So if we come over to Blender very quickly, and I'll just show you exactly um, what I used for the settings. So 4K, 30 frames, I saved it as an FFmpeg video, Make sure you go to encoding and use MP4, MPEG4. You want to use the H.264 codec, because I don't think there is an H.265 yet. No, I'm sure I can add that. I used perceptually lossless, good encoding quality, no audio codec. Um, and if you were going to use an audio codec, I'll go through that with you in one of my next tutorials. Um, and then finally, you want to come down and go to color management and select your look. Now I've selected high contrast, um, so if we come into the look, uh, the viewport shading, sorry, you can see what this does. Bit washed out, still looks good. Darker, darker again. But I find that high contrast pretty much suits exactly the look I'm going for. So that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment. I'd love to see all your tutorials. If there's anything that you want to see me do or any suggestions you have, then please leave a comment and I'd love to check out some of your uh, projects. Um, and keep your eyes peeled for an announcement video coming shortly. Um, I am working on something. I'm changing this channel completely, basically. You'll see what I mean shortly. Anyway, thank you for watching. Goodbye.